Hey guys, Alicia from Morning Hawk Creations. If you've wondered what the big to-do is about cheating with your art, I'm going to go into the pros and cons and the use of different tools used in drawing and painting. Included in this episode will be the use of freehand, the grid method, projectors, and light tables. I will also discuss my use or preferred methods and why I choose them. Now when I was in school you were only allowed a possibility of two combination methods, freehand or the grid method. If you were replicating another image you had to use the grid method for accuracy and proportion. The other thing about the grid method, if they haven't told you, it involves math. And sometimes that math sounds like algebra. To make it bigger, you must make your quarter inch square a half inch square on your piece. To keep that dog the same distance, subdivide your half inch square to a quarter inch and then simply render it the same size. If you're not great at math, you're not going to necessarily find the grid system all that much easier. The other complaint is that you're rendering small squares and a part of the piece rather than the entire image. Now freehand was left to those rendering character, caricatures, fantasy creatures, or scenes. Nothing that could be described as photorealistic. With freehand you could use a set of rules that sounded an awful lot like it's your height, one sixth of your head, one fourth is the legs, one third is your torso, and so on and so forth. The problem I quickly developed was I was becoming so obsessed with these proportions that my subjects never seemed to be in quite the right spot, and I learned to later ask for a second piece of paper in class to do my rough placement layout, and then copy it on with a second piece of finished paper, thus costing me two pieces of paper in class, which gets very costly. We were taught to use rulers, protractors, straight edges, triangles, templates, compasses, French curves, all to accomplish the look we wanted. If we were using graphic design or architecture, computers were not yet a thing and could not be easily used for art. In fact, it wasn't until my junior year of high school that I first got my hand on a copy of Windows Paint, which when you've never used a mouse to render lines or color, and you've never had a look away from your own hands to see what you're rendering was clumsy and frustrating to use. If you wanted a font, you had to draw it by hand, pick your size, and line, and draw it out. Calligraphy was a course you had to take as part of Art 2D. There was no option for just using Windows, and Photoshop hadn't even been created yet. You guys have it easy. Now I'm sure there's going to be a few that are going to argue that there were projectors, and even the camera obscura. And yeah, there were. As far as my art teacher was concerned, if you were doing on a mural on the wall, you could have it. Otherwise, the projectors were off limits and really quite useless for taking something and rendering on a piece of paper. Perhaps one of my favorite uses of the combination of the different techniques is that of a grid method and a light table. One of my biggest pet peeves and one of my arguments against using a grid method and one of the reasons that I've now installed a light table into my workbench, I don't like the enormous waste of time and resources it takes to grid everything out and then erase the grid. It's hard on the paper and oftentimes you can't get the grid out. And if you're doing a blank backdrop, such as this painted dog, you won't ever get all of your grid lines out. This technique that I'm going to show you combines the grid method and the use of a light table. So the piece you see below is my painted dog. Now what you don't see is the grid that is actually used to lay out that dog. Now if I turn the light table on, you'll be able to see it. And when used in combination with the reference picture, I can either enlarge or shrink down, but for all kinds of purposes, accurately reproduce my subject. Because the grid lines are actually below the drawing, not above the drawing, on the surface of the drawing, I don't have to worry about those carrying out. If I go one step further and use a second piece which is cut out to mirror my squares, I can then dial in my focus points square to square for the minor parts of my anatomy.
turning the table on and off to make sure that my squares and my focus card are actually lined up on good squares. I still use freehand to sketch all 3D concepts or just to free think without worrying about creating a finished piece. Freehand is also my first go-to when I want to create a character or something that's just stylized like Hey, speaking of which, I haven't set foot on YouTube with any sort of 3D work. I thought I would start a new 3D piece, but I haven't decided if I wanted an Eastern or Western dragon. But I do have some rough elements on hand, and I promise to walk you through the whole thing, so feel free to subscribe and look, more, look for more from me. If you're looking for help on a specific piece or subject, feel free to drop me a line on Facebook at Morning Hawk Creations, or suggest an animal in the comments below. Keep it clean though, okay? Talk to you later.